Hey, welcome to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. This is part two on the restoration of the Singer sewing machine. The way I decided to do this video is to break it into three parts. The first part dealt with the disassembly and how we handled the base. The second part is going to focus on the repairs. The third part will focus on refinishing. So today we're going to start working on some of the things on this machine that need fixing. And I have to apologize because the first part of this video, I forgot to turn the sound on. So the first four or five scenes I had to uh, effectively narrate with titles. But the, the sound returns uh, shortly into it and all is well thereafter. So here we go. I wonder if I can use my spring punch to pop those out of there. Let's see. Yeah, we got enough now we can grab them. There we go, two more. I decided to address that bent over nail because this whole side of the drawer is loose in this rabbit and uh, we're getting that pulled out now. It's a, uh, it's a pretty big nail for where it is. So, And then it split this drawer side when it was pounded in. So we've got uh, you know multiple step repairs here and uh, if I can get the rest of this out without damaging anything I will. We've got one more nail I think in there so let me get to this see if I can get this off. Okay more good news as I'm taking a look at this piece here there are three nails driven into it that have to come out so what I think I'm gonna do is just I hope you can see this Just tap this right out of that rat, out of that joint. There we go. And that's the damage that was done when someone decided to ram nails through there to secure that drawer. Okay, let's get to fixing it now. Well, I'm glad we decided to take this drawer repair seriously and take this part of the drawer out because there are no less than 16 nail holes in this little tiny joint. So what I'm going to do next is identify where there's any lengthy splits, super glue those together, and then we will scrape everything nice and clean and prepare to reattach the drawer side to the drawer and then eventually that trim piece will go in too. But we've got to get this part taken care of first. Okay, you can see we got a large crack here. There's also a crack back here. This is the one I want to fix right now. And I'm just putting some medium super glue into that joint. And I'll squeeze that nice and tight. Hit it with a little instant activator and just hold on to it for a 20 seconds or so. The reason we use CA glue on a repair like this is just really for speed because it's, it's a 
quite strong, but it allows me to do split after split after split and get this done. And you see I'm wearing gloves and there's a reason for that. This super glue means it. All right, that one's taken care of. I'm gonna take care of the rest of them, and then I'll bring you back. I think that came out very, very well considering what we were dealing with. You know, this thing had pretty well been blown clean apart. Okay, here's our repaired board. And right here you can see the joint that had completely blown apart. It's now properly fastened in here with no nails and I did make a glue block. So let's get on to attaching the molding. Well, if that glue up, see how we do. Let's take off the clamps and see how we did. Looks great. And there's our molding piece glued on. do the refinishing process we'll color out some of this fill from where that board was blown out but now we have the moldings reattached correctly on both sides of that pull-out drawer okay let's move on to something else and yes I filled in those old nail holes I use uh, generally I use timber made in this case it's walnut and then as we do the refinishing process on the drawer that'll all be nice and smooth and just for the heck of it, I've mixed up some potassium permanganate, which we've used before. It's an oxidizer. And we're going to put it on this new piece of uh, wood that I, I made this glue block out of and see if we can age it so it looks like it belongs. If you remember correctly from the one video we used this, it goes on purple, but it, uh, it quickly will change the color of the wood to a more oxidized brown. So let's see what happens. And even though we haven't begun the refinishing process, we'll just put some on here and see how that goes. Let's see what that looks like in a few minutes. Yeah, that's a great result. That uh, aged that very nicely. There's our new piece. There's the 100 year old piece. It's potassium permanganate. It's not too expensive. You can get it on Amazon. And it's an oxidizer that will age wood. Very good. And you're looking inside the cradle. The, uh, this is the piece that cradles the machine from underneath. And obviously this is a light I put in here for you. But this is the piece of wood here that we had concerns about because the back of the cradle, which is uh, curved plywood, attaches to it. And we noticed that this, this gap wasn't consistent. So I did take a look at it and in fact this piece has come loose from where it's supposed to be and has moved over. So what we need to do is get it back where it belongs and reattach it this is an extremely tight joint on both sides so what I'm going to do is drip some thin super glue in here 
and then spray it and I believe that's going to be the best way to secure it. We have to secure it on the other side too because it is indeed not attached through the sides and I'm not going to uh, to change that attachment. Okay, I have it taped up the best I can to keep the super glue from dripping anywhere but where we want it to be. And I have some thin super glue and a micro pipette and I'm just going to lay in enough that it's going to soak into that joint and lock this piece down. I considered putting some yellow carpenter's glue there and then trying to slide the piece up on top of it but I was concerned that it would uh, it would probably pull most of the glue away so I decided to use this technique. And some instant activator and it's it's back where it belongs. Alright now we have something that we can fasten this plywood back to as we can begin the repairs on this curved piece of plywood. And we're back on the cradle. We have a lot of loose veneer, particularly the final sheet of oak. In this case here it's split here and it's split on this side as well. If I was to take this piece of plywood off, delaminate it, re-glue it, it would have to get glued back to this curve or it wouldn't bend. So by leaving it on here I'm sure that it's going to take the shape of the curve that we need. So anyways, I, I made up this plat. This is a piece of quarter inch plywood that I had laying around or call or platen or whatever and wrapped it in wax paper so the glue can't stick to it. I want to show you something from the side. If you can see the first six inches that's just about dead flat. So if I was to glue just the first six inches clamp it with this then work my way up then work my way up to the next section with a four inch call I can handle this part of the curve by basically gluing it twice. The other option would be to take a piece of plywood and, and cut parallel grooves in it so it'll bend. I don't have any bending plywood unfortunately I, I haven't been able to find it in my area. But this is the solution that I'm going to use to clamp it. I'm going to glue it in three sections and to get, to get the glue in I'm going to extend this split with a razor blade right across here, peel this back, get all sorts of glue in here, and then put that first six inches on, pressing it against the remainder of the plywood, which is, which is curved correctly, and I think that's going to work, so let's get to it. What I'm going to do now is put, try to get some of these little uh, nails out. There's nails, three nails in here. I'm going to get at least two of them out so I can flip that back, clean it out, and get some glue in there. I've blown out as much dust as I could with some compressed air. So now it's time to, to get to gluing. We'll see how it goes. What I found is that if I glue this flat, I'm never going to get this one flat tomorrow. So what I'm going to have to do is glue them both and get that joint together before I glue down the bottom one. So let's get some glue in this. This has been cleaned out as well. Well there's how we clamped it up. These band clamps have real good hard pressure on this call here and then these two straps pull that call in and then I have all the the hand screws on there as well and then we actually went around one more time with another band clamp 
to pull it all together. So we're going to leave this and let it dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow morning and see how we did. Alright, we're down nice and tight as we expected we would be, but this joint did not lay flat. So we just have to slit this again, lay it down, and re-glue it. Okay, I took you off camera to fix this mess. What had happened is that there was insufficient clamping pressure right along here, and because this was is loose and frail, it bubbled up and it didn't go down. So what I wound up doing was cutting it here, laying it back down, removing any place that it overlapped, and then getting it glued back down along this seam, and then any places there were gaps, I filled it in with slivers of, uh, of veneer, or the real tiny things, and the nail holes got some filler, and then it was sanded. So this is all now re-glued nice and tightly. The curve is smooth. We're good till up about here, and then we have to re-glue this last third. I'm not happy with the process that led to this. The result is fine. The process, uh, I don't want to repeat. So I'm going to give it some thought and come up with a different solution for how I want to clamp this portion of this old veneer, secure it, and maintain that curve. But this part is fine. I'm happy with it now, and we will move on to this. Sometimes when you're struggling with a solution, the best thing to do is just kind of walk away, go entertain your mind doing something else, get away from it, and sort of in your subconscious, your, your mind will solve the problem, and that's what I did today. So I gave it some thought, and the solution came to me in the form of a timbre door. Let me show you what I came up with. And what I did was get some furring strips and cut them to the exact width of the cradle, one, two, three, four, five. And these furring strips, these furring strips are only an inch and a half wide. So they will conform m more closely to the curvature. And because they're rounded, they will, they're able to flex and yet still provide pressure. And then these band clamps push this down. This is rock solid. That's going to be how we clamp down that last third. So let's get to it. Okay, here we go on the glue up. I'm going to be using two different types of glue. I'm using a regular a carpenter's glue, regular PVA glue, and then I'm going to be using some PVA glue that I've thinned with water so it can uh, run down into the little uh, cracks and voids down towards the bottom. This veneer is in really, really bad shape. I've got the, the glue way down where it needs to be. I'm pretty happy with it. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of work this veneer a little bit with this veneer hammer that my friend Pat made for me. And just make sure that it's all covering every surface. And you can see it's squeezing out. The other thing I did was get the nails out of the way, any of the nails that were on the side that might cause us any aggravation with this veneer laying down flat, I took them out. All right, I've also wet the veneer, that'll help it bend a little bit. I think we're ready. I take these together just to make them easier to handle. There we go. I think this is going to work very well. This is down nice and tight, follows the curve. We got glue squeeze out on all four or all three sides and from underneath wherever it can get through. So the glue's gotten all the way down here. This hasn't split back open, although we've got quite a bit of pressure on this. 
we haven't compromised the repairs that we made this morning. So I think we got it. I'm much happier with this solution. Tomorrow we'll tell the tale. So I will see you in the morning. And we're going to start working on the drawer cases that unfortunately have a pretty significant case of the wiggles. And what these are, these upgrades are on the side that shows are screwed in with six screws. Now when I tighten these up, and they're all loose, it'll stiffen itself back up. But on the side that doesn't show, it's held in with these little tiny brads, and these are loose too. And if I just pound these back in, they're going to come loose again. Plus, I believe one of these is already split from a nail being pounded in. So what we're going to do is take these off one at a time and glue them and then reattach fasteners and we will repair the split. The split's right here. We'll repair that split. So that's next. There was only really this one nail here. The four of them were missing. There was one at the top that was just kind of sitting there. So I've got to try to pry this nail out. And this is not an original nail. It was pounded into the wood without drilling it and it split it. So let's see if we can get get this to come out so we can grab it. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take this nail out and then I'm going to take this piece and super glue this closed just like we did on the drawer side and then we'll reinstall it and I'll show you how I do that. Yeah, that crack's been taken care of. Remember, this is all going to get stripped and refinished so don't get too worried about me saying that. There's remnants of glue in the joint on both sides. We're going to get rid of that. Is sanding lightly here, and you can see on the back side, I've taken care of that as well. And I'm going to use some hot hide glue for no other reason than it's probably the most appropriate adhesive for an antique for this kind of repair. I often choose to use yellow glue for big repairs because the open time is often something that I need, but for like little veneer repairs on antiques and things like this, I, I'll use hot hide glue if I have some mixed up. Okay, and it goes down. Now I'm going to try to get these brads right back in their original holes. That way I'm sure this is lined up correctly. And I'm completely aware that this microphone picks up all my old man noises, so I'm really trying hard not to sound like a mouth breather right near the mic. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, by the way. Now these replacement brads that I bought are the only ones I could get that weren't, didn't have a flat head on them. And I got them just a little bit longer than the existing ones, so we could get a little bit better bite. Okay, I have to repeat that uh, a bunch of times. And here's how we do the sides that have screws in them. First step, obviously, back out the screw. I keep these on the table in a particular order so they go back in the same hole. It's probably not critical since they're machine screws, but what the heck. I flip it over so I don't lose orientation for top and bottom. Then with a piece of 150, I lightly sand off. Repeat the same on the other parts. And <clears throat> these actually are shaped to match the curve that's in here. There's a hump in the uh, in the vertical pieces that's been milled in with probably with a shaper, I would imagine, so that the uh, connection here is strong. Okay, hot hide glue. Flip it back over. Keeping your screws in order.
right back in the original hole and screw them down tight. And you can see as I put some tension on these screws we get some squeeze out of the hide glue indicating that in fact that there's wood to wood contact under there which is what we want for a good strong joint. And I just take some warm water out of my glue pot clean up any squeeze out and leave it to dry but there you go no more wiggles okay we've given this two days for the glue to dry let's take off the clamps and see how we did Okay, this is all down nice and tight. The laminations are back together. It's nice and strong. We had a, a similar problem on this glue up. So what I did again is I just cut it, laid it down, and re-glued it, and sanded it. It's together, it's rock solid, and that repair is done. And looking from the side, you can see that's down nice and tight. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's finish up this section of the... Uh, of the video by inlaying this uh, new piece of veneer right here. What we'll do is take a piece of blue tape, line it up, and making sure we keep the grain orientation right. And there's our shape. I've got an old piece of oak veneer here, but it's going to be just well, you might be able to get it. Let's try it. Okay. Now we just cut along this line and hope it fits. And here's our piece of veneer that we templated on. And this can get cut with a scalpel or in this case a pair of scissors. And it's not unusual for this old veneer to split under the tape, but just lay it down flat and it should be fine. And we lay that in there and we see we got a real nice fit. So what we're going to do is take this up all together with the tape on it get some glue in here and then lay it back down. And I'm going to choose to use hot hide glue here. And that's our piece of veneer right there. And there we are. We'll come back tomorrow and see how it went down. We let this uh, set up overnight. Let me sand this repair flush and I'll bring you right back. And there's that repair. That came out pretty well. Well that's going to do it for this part of the restoration which is basically just doing some of the repairs. Uh, obviously I didn't film every repair I did on this machine. If you get involved in one of these projects you're going to find that pretty much every time you turn your head there's going to be something else to fix. These machines were extremely expensive when they were new. So when they were new they were used and they were used hard. They were used hard for a long time 
as things broke, people fixed them the best they could with nails and screws and things. And then they also usually faced long periods of storage, often in a damp basement or a, a you know, a, 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 a garage. And between heating and cooling and dampness, uh, the veneer just cracks and lets go, the, the glue lets go. And they're usually, although you look at them and you go, oh, there's not that much here, when you start to work on them, my lord, every square inch needs something. So just understand that when you, when you tackle a job like this, if that's what you choose to do, it may be a whole lot bigger than you think. I can tell you I have over 20 hours in this project already, and we haven't even started the refinishing. It's, it can be that tedious to get these right. But anyways, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching, take good care, and remember, just wood color and some shiny stuff, and stay tuned, because we're going to make a video of how we get this veneer off, how we get the new veneer on, and then ultimately, we'll show you how I refinish this machine, reassemble it, and finish it up. Thanks for watching, take care. Bye.